I've reached a stage where I can no longer guarantee our safe return to Earth. We're all very ill, as you know, and because there is no known pathogen causing this sickness, the crew seems to be unanimous in its desire to open one of the Mars water samples. I want to make this statement in case this mission fails. And right now, there are many indicators that it may. Commander Irwin is sick, as we all are, and is currently unable to make the right decision. Uh, Mikhail uh, continues to stand by me. Uh, but even this is something that uh, I can't ultimately be sure of. Fortunately, Dr. Alarcon is willing to say what must be said. But to be able to act, we must all agree that it is the right decision to confront Commander Irwin. If I cannot prevent this from happening, then you will, of course, be forced to deal with a ship and a crew that are deemed biohazard. But if we are unable to find out what is making us sick soon, then you may end up dealing with a crew that is so seriously compromised that we will not be able to make it home <laughs> at all. For future expeditions, emotional distress has direct impact on decision-making. In Commander Irwin's case, I strongly suspect his guilt concerning Dr. Rakuda is making it more difficult for him to maintain rational judgment. Therefore, in future, I believe even more time should be spent in training on the psychological aspect, since it has direct impact on the success or failure of any mission. should know that we intend to make a formal request to ground to test a sample. I see. It's time to stop ignoring the problem. <laughs> it won't just go away. Well, I'm sorry that you see things that way. But as long as I'm commanding this mission, it'll be me who makes the command decisions. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. We've been through that before. By all the operational rules you love so much. Hiromi should have never been given permission to leave the hab. Now you're gambling the rest of our lives on another questionable decision? Look, you can make this hard or you can make this easy, but we need to make that call. No, we don't. Not without my authority. Attention, solar monitor confirmed flare emotion. Central, predict magnitude. We have less than an hour before the proton storm reaches us. Let's prep for safe mode. <laughs> Yeah. 
Houston, Terra Nova. <coughs> we are just a few minutes away here from safing the communications. <coughs> the coronal mass ejection should be on us in a day or so. But the proton storm, it's moving much faster. Uh, we estimate that it will reach us in approximately 30 minutes. <laughs> But everything should be buttoned up by then, and we will be safely in our cabins. We will contact you in a day or two, or when possible. Terra Nova out. doesn't even exist anymore. You're not alone. request to break the seal with or without Rick's permission. I know Antoine will support me and I trust the others will follow. <laughs> Let's face the facts. We're all slowly dying and this may be my last entry. Even if we survive the storm, I don't see how we can go on like this much longer. <clears throat> so maybe this is how it all ends. <laughs> From the irony, the extra shielding of our cabins protects us from the radioactive storm on the outside. <clears throat> but while we wait, we may die from the invisible threat on the inside.
cars down, trying to identify the source of the problem. Great. <laughs> Secondary bus is offline throughout the vehicle. <coughs> that one uh, is working on it, but every every system we shut down for safe mode <coughs> will not start up again. Nothing happened. I know. You're a good cosmonaut. <coughs> I'll take it back where it belongs. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Hey. hey, I need some help here. You all right? Lucia, come on. Detectors say there are no combustion byproducts. No smoke at all. We, we must be getting false readouts. It's not Mars that's killing us. It's our own technology.
So, every time a board failed, the master system reset to a default mode with a standard date, January 26, 2030, the day you left Earth orbit. Whatever the monitors picked up, it didn't matter, because the only readings that were ever reported were the ones from launch day. Sorry again, guys, but we're on to it, and we'll get back to you soon. Houston out. New code from ground uploaded and installed. Gear scrubbers? Working again. It is carbon monoxide. We still need to find the source of the CO. I'm gonna start with the flight deck and <coughs> want you both to work with ground. And make sure we're not faced with any other surprises. On to that. What have you found? Uh, the wiring to and from the fan has been overheating. Look. Uh, of course. But if these wire burns occurred, there could be others. All releasing carbon monoxide that the faulty sensors never picked up on. Man, a few more hours and that seal would have killed us all. Yeah. How are you feeling? Good. Very good. I was talking to Rick and then suddenly I was in Sochi on Black Sea. Beautiful beaches, you would look. What's wrong? Mount Fuji. Oh, the gods. I forgot. You do not believe, huh? Maybe, maybe just a little, huh? Maybe we could, uh... Maybe we could climb it together someday. Huh? Put the stone back for Hiromi. Hmm? Poor hero, me. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. Status report, August 20, 2031. And I'm happy to say that there is nothing much to report compared to the first 14 months of this mission. The last five have been practically a vacation. All systems are running smoothly. The crew is happy and healthy. And in just 12 days, we will finally be home. Commander Richard Irwin, out. Rick, Antoine. I'm on the flight deck. Could you come down? Yeah, what is it, Antoine? Is it a problem? I'd say so. Well, I've checked and double-checked the bypass. And it should work fine. But? 
seems there's a problem with the supply module. It's not giving me any response from the NTLs. You're sure on this? Absolutely. Attention all crew, prep for spin down. up on the electrical supply module. Here it is. That's where arm two hit. That's the problem. The dent from the arm collision has turned into a crack, possibly as a result of extreme temperature variations. And the crack in the cover must have compromised the shielding over the electrical supply module. So the flare likely damaged the FETs in the engine controllers. When the time comes to fire the engines, we may not be able to initiate the burn. And the return capsule might not survive a re-entry. We need to replace the damaged FETs. Not with the arm. The end defector is not designed for that kind of precision work. Well, that's... We need to prep for an EVA. Let's spin up and work out a plan. Well, the propulsion module is a high radiation environment. We can't do an EVA anywhere near it. Yeah. Well, it's not as if we have much choice. The cabin doors, they're line. Couldn't we use them as a radiation shield? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, you and I can get to work on that, while Jackie and Mikhail figure out a way to attach them to the arm. Antoine, zero in on those boards. We have only one chance to get this right. All right. Copy that. This will fit through the airlock and make a good radiation shield. But we'll need two of them. I'll take down mine. This upcoming EVA is the most crucial that any one of us has ever done. We are now only a few days from Earth, which leaves us very little time to prep, coordinate, and complete this repair. Cosmic radiation is also a problem. We'll be constantly monitoring levels and keeping to a strict time schedule. All EVAs require perfection, both in coordination and execution. There's little or no room for error. But in this case, failure is simply not an option. If we fail to make this repair, then we will not be able to slow sufficiently to allow a safe re-entry of the return capsule into the Earth's atmosphere. The doors are quite large, but easy to manipulate in zero-G. We did not have difficulty attaching them to the arm with a spare grapple fixture. It went like clockwork. The shield is locked in position now. Turn over, Houston. Copy your telemetry and confirm you are go for EVA. Copy that. Lucia, final go. I have two good signals. Rick, Antoine, you are go for egress. Copy that. We're opening the hatch. Both out. Proceeding toward the truss. We 
have you now on video. No need to rush. Not a problem, Akai. Out here, rushing is not an option. I'm tethering to Star Trust. Kyle, confirm time remaining. You're making good time. You have five hours to go. Copy that. start of the Star Trust. Rick is proceeding to the repair site. Copy that. I'm watching your dosimeter. I'll let you know exactly when you're at your limit. Copy that. Arriving at the ESN. Copy that. You're on schedule. Consumables are nominal. I'm tethered in position. Umbrella, Jackie. It's like a day at the beach up here. If you stay there longer than 90 minutes, you'll start tanning from the inside. Copy that. Okay, uh, Rick, uh, you're at your limit. You've got to turn it over to Antoine now. I'm almost there. <sighs> Pivoting the cover. is off. Copy that. I'm heading back. Good job, Rick.
holding in position. I'm tethered at the repair site. Everything is well prepared, my compliments. Did he just say something nice? Must be radiation sickness. <laughs> okay, I'm done with this stage. Antoine, standing by for board verification. Copy that. You've got a few minutes, Max. Antoine, standing by. The car, so good check. Ball 22. Circuit check, board 22. Green. Good work, Antoine. You have a fan club now. Not bad for an engineer. You're also at your radiation limit, Antoine. Head back now. Just one last check. Levels are out of the safe zone. 
just calm us down. He's unconscious. We're heading back to the airlock. Copy that. I will meet you there. active. Earth slow down burn, minus 10 seconds. Secondary coolant system. Secondary coolant system enabled. Now I think we go home. Someday to 
the stars. We each had our reasons. Our dreams. You made it possible for us to achieve them. Wrong. This is your dream.